All right. So we are on to our last six wines of our uh, 24 night vine box advent calendar. The first of the night is going to be a Spanish white, uh, Garnaxa Blanca, which is our Lindia 2018. Right here. So let's go ahead and uh, open her up. I'm going to do this thing. <laughs> God. <laughs> So, as we're looking at the uh, colors of this, <laughs> wow, it's almost it's almost slightly greenish. But very pale, very oh, almost kind of watery. But all right, let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a swirl and a sniff. It's mm. green to me. Hmm. Your light's green, kind of yellowish. It's warm. Yes. That it's warm. It smells like my light. lighting. Ah. Uh, it kind of smells like yellow parish with kind of like a weird salinity. Like, like kind of weird tide pool water. Oh, anyone else catching anything on the nose? It kind of smells like very chemical, like almost acetone, but not quite. Can't quite place it. It's got a little bit of that almost like gasoline. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's give it a taste. So, cheers. <laughs> hmm. It's very different than what it smelled like. Very different. That there's like a strong honey aftertaste. I feel like I just took a spoonful of honey and put it in my mouth. And it's still got like, uh, for me, the the flavors that are coming out are more kind of like pear and pineapple. But but it goes so fast. Well, according to the tasting notes, this is supposed to be greenish yellow with golden highlights in the glass when the light catches it in the right way. Sweet fennel and other herbs can be detected on first sniff. So it might be in fennel. Oh, okay. Uh, with pear and tropical fruits eventually rising from the glass. Broad and unctuous with a light glycerin mouthfeel marked acidity, and white pear, white peach, and warm grass flavors. I was getting apricot, so I guess peach is a stone fruit, but similar. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, I'm still not getting that kind of like greenish fennel. To me, it's got, it, I think I, Sarah kind of had pointed it out of just it kind of being like the, an odd chemical ish, you know, uh, just, you know, if, yeah, somewhere between acetone and, and, and petrol. <laughs> Not bad with the salad. I like it with the tomato. It's good with this. So this is a manchego wrapped in arugula and 
Now, because it does actually mention the uh, those green notes, I, I kind of was wondering if the arugula would, uh, you know, kind of enhance that. Oh, I would not go with that. <laughs> Parmesan. <laughs> mm -mm. Came out very bitter. Probably because it's not a uh, not acidic enough. Oh, I have some pretzel like kind of olives still that they liked. If we don't have enough mm -hmm. food, it's always a problem. Right. We always a problem. Tendency to undercook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a little bit of the green does come out with the uh, the goat cheese. Okay. So these are dates with goat cheese and hummel and almonds and honey. That's delightful. Hmm. That's what I meant. I meant mm -hmm. figs. I say these don't look like the dates that I had last time, but that's okay. These are not dates. These are figs. <laughs> I was looking for dates, and then I realized I needed figs. The dates are in my head. Ooh. That looks mustardy. What? That's nothing. Mustardy. Nothing has mustard in it. <clears throat> it's that chili sauce, except oh. for it didn't thicken. I so. can it. The turnover? Okay. Oh, I, I don't usually think of Asian chili sauce with beef wellington. I but... don't either, but it sounds interesting. I'm gonna try it. Uh, any other pairings out there that were either yay or nay? I really like it with tomatoes. Tomatoes? Okay. What's wrong? Using two pages. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> two pages for oh. review. Oh. You liked it that much, it'd take two pages, huh? <laughs> I like it with the figs. Yes. I like it with the figs. I like it with the It almost kind of needs a little bit of, almost sounds like it needs a little bit of sugar to kind of round itself out. Yeah. All right. So, on to our second wine of the night, which is our La Tour Blanche Gewürztraminer from Alsace, France. It is also a 2018. And that's the reason why I put those towards the front, because usually Gewürztraminer is a bit of a heavier grape, and you want to kind of put it towards the end of your whites. But because it's a 2018 and our last white is a 2020, um, it's going to have a little bit more like powerful fruit to it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a try. I am always a fan of all sauce Gewürztraminer. It's because it uh kind of blends both the artistic side of France with uh, a little bit more of the uh, German perfection. <laughs> so looking at this one, this one's a uh, it's still pretty pale, but it's got a much more of a golden hue to it. Which, again, is is pretty typical for uh, a Gewürztraminer. It's usually a, a much more yellowish golden. So, yeah, let's go ahead and give this thing a sniff. Yep. Oh. Yep. Green apple, <laughs> Charlie Ranger. Oh, I can get that now, but first I was like... So I, I smell a little bit of green apple, but, I mean, if I was... If I was blind, <laughs> no. Oh, this this smells of like like honey and and like tropical lychee. Yeah. Papaya. The honey. Like yeah. like almost all tropical fruits. It smells very warm. There it is. A little bit of a little bit of apple, like candied apple. The jelly nature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a try. Cheers. Mm. No. It is so sweet. Oh, I really don't like sweet wine. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> I wouldn't say, well, sweet. It's more like an off dry. But yeah, I was not expecting a, uh, a sweeter wine on this lineup. Huh. Huh. Indeed. <laughs> Very sweet apple. Whoa. Uh huh. Sugar water. Is this so turn, maybe? No, that's just. I feel like it's in the name, but it wears. I mean, it, it, it's definitely a rich demeanor. Just, I don't know. I, I well, I, 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 I don't know. I guess the the last few garbage meters that I've had have always been kind of off dry, so it kind of makes sense. So, uh, let's see. According to uh, its tasty notes, a peppery and spice filled nose of white flower and rambutan fruit. I'm not even sure what. Rambutan, yeah. Uh, rich on the palate with lychee ripe golden pineapple and golden delicious apple flavors lifted by a tart apricot note. I have no tart note. Mm -mm. Uh, for me, it's it's all tropical. That, that's yeah. like a spicy sauce. Well, let's see how spicy it is. But, but... Sweet and spicy. But I, I'm definitely not getting the, the spicy note. I mean, considering that that's what Gewürztraminer means is, is spice. Is that it's supposed to have a bit of like a, a peppery spice note to it? They forgot to add it. <laughs> I, and the more I drink of it, the the less sweet it gets. It's like the milk. It's so sweet. It gets a little bitter, I guess. But not in a good way. No, it, it does not get better. Oh. Really? No, it's like rubbery or. Kind of vegetable kind of finish. It's not vegetable, it's something different. What is it? It is um, the fromage? I don't know. Three no, like the goat cheese would be really good with the sweet one. I'd it like... okay. Yeah, I was gonna say like a little bit of chevre or something like that <laughs> would probably be good. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. I had some like uh sheep's sheep's milk cheese with truffle in it, and that was a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't. It was okay with the Manchego bite thing. We need to finish this and move on. Yes, agreed. I think you do have like a so it's hmm. it's fine with your face thing because I think that the sweetness kind of pairs well together. Mm -hmm. Sort of, I agree. <clears throat> like if you had a buck bob or something. Okay, I can see it with a baklava. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wouldn't drink it, but <laughs> like I think you would have to, like you would have to know what this wine was, and then like just put a whole lot of intent. To make yes. It bearable. Mm-hmm. Bearable. <laughs> I could maybe with like cheesecake even. You have like a spicy kind of um, offset the sweetness. I, I just reach for something else. I haven't had a diverse demeanor that I've liked. So, what's next? Yeah. All right. So, number three is our night 23, our Le Petit, Le Petit Blanc. But actually, on the, the little vial, it says Le Petit Coup Blanc. But this is a 2020 from Languedoc. 50%. Why is it just Sauvignon? I, I'm, I'm, 
I don't think anything is just called, it must be Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc and Colombard. <laughs> like, I really don't like the tasty nuts from Vine Box. <laughs> they like screw up everything. They've screwed, they've been screwing up the year. You know, they yeah. screw up like what the grapes are. If, if that's one thing that I could, I would caution them on is if people are going to be uh, reading your notes, you better make them well. <laughs> So this one is definitely uh, paler than our last one. It's much more on that. It's much more on that like straw yellow, leading almost towards green. Mm -hmm. Oh, too. So what are you getting on the nose? Uh, we just like it. <laughs> Smells fresh. Yeah, there's like a little bit of grass, right. like marinara. Like yeah, I was, I was gonna say it, it smells uh, like 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 a, a sweet alfalfa field. Oh. Jar mm. pear. That's the best, like low sugar. Oh yeah, like Bartlett pear. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm not really getting much else other than other than those green notes and and pear. Mm -hmm. So let's give this thing a taste. Cheers. I can sit on the porch and drink. Mm, uh, it was exactly <laughs> when I got to the porch. Hmm. This is a happy summer wine. Did you? It's not, it's not too acidic. It's actually kind of smooth. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of like chocolate fruit after the. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's I don't know, to me again. It's it's very straightforward on those same notes. It's still got that kind of pear with a little bit of like a like a greenish after. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what uh, the notes say. Slightly acidic, flush with fruit, and soft on the palate. Okay. A trifecta for a little white French sipper. Chamomile and yellow apple flavors dominate before petite white flowers and a touch of crisp acid to wrap it up. With the tomato bread. Tomato bread. <laughs> That's what it's called. Is Spanish it really? Bread. Oh, okay. Apparently, I need to taste more chamomile. Chamomile is flour, right? Mm -hmm. With the flour, hmm. tea. it's used to lower your blood pressure. Or put you to sleep. It's a calming tea, herbal tea blend. Or used as or in. No, I, th I think they, you know, I, I I can't say that they really nailed the the flavor parts, but you know, them at least describing this as a a little French sipper. Uh, yeah. What do you call the finish? I'm like part of the, of the flavor at the, at the end. But I think it, I think it's a little bit of an acidic note, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. oh, Hmm. Yeah, it's just. I guess that that part's also. I, yeah, I can't really describe the finish other than I mean, because the flavor goes away and it's just kind of. That's it. Yeah. Part. Right. <laughs> Someone put like chocolate chip in there. It's not lemony acid, but it kind of made me a pineapple. Kind of that kind of. Carries forward. So it's like a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. You can just boil the, just 
to the hand. Yeah, and it's literally tomato and garlic and salt and pepper mm -hmm. and all of it. That's why it's wonderful. <laughs> Now having that thing with with uh, like a little bit of something salty, yeah. like like yeah. if you try it with that Parmesan, it's pretty good. Yeah, it was with the salad, and then there's some Parmesan thrown in with the blue cheese. It was, mm. it was good. I also make it, made a gorgonzola filled one, but I left them at home because they weren't as good. <laughs> All right, no. let us move on to wine number four. So this is actually it's it's the last night of the of the box. Uh, it's a it's a rosé from Puglia, Italy, called Pasido Valpone Rose Rosentica. <laughs> now Puglia, uh, what it's Puglia uh, is it Puglia? Puglia. Okay, Puglia. GL makes that yes sound. Oh yeah, it's the y. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you remember from our Italian session, uh, Puglia is known for their Negra Mano or Negro Amaro. Right. So this being, actually it's uh, quite pink or, or light or, you know, what should be a pretty dark grape. So this must be like, right, like right after they, uh, kind of start destemming and crushing the grape. Yeah. At that first uh, clear juice off of there, is I'm going to guess is from here. Oh, so actually, never, never mind. Uh, the grapes that they list are Sangiovese, which is odd from that region, and Aglianico. Hey, not Aglianico. Aglianico. <laughs> Aglianico. It's hard. Oh, it I it's like, like spin it. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah. Yeah, is, is yeah and yeah, and it's so the L also, so it's Agnanico. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's look at it. Look really at it. weird. So looking at the color on it, I, I would almost say uh, this is orange. This sounds yummy. I mean, it's sort of salmony, but it it's mm -hmm. it's verging on like just light orange. Like if you if you thought of like an orange wine, this <laughs> this, this is it. Uh, orange wines are a thing. Okay. Can I go with oh yeah, but those are more like just uh, from natural uh, yellow grapes, like white grapes. Oh, that's got that's got an odd yeah, nose does it to it. Smell like spinach. It smells like spinach. Yeah. Uh, to me, it, it it smells like a wet horse. No, it smells like spinach. Nice. It smells like spinach. It. Yeah. Yes. Uh, cheers. <laughs> uh, kind of kind of musky. Smells a little bit. Strawberries are kind of musky. No, they're it's not. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, it's like it's like like wet furry animal. Yes, wet furry animal. I can go with that. Or spinach. <laughs> no, I don't. Cooked spinach. I, I disagree. <laughs> it, okay, hopefully it's, it, it tastes better than it smells. Cheers. It does. It tastes much better than it smells. It this does. is remarkably good for a rosé. Hmm. Very smooth, which coming from a bunch of Red grapes Doesn't make sense. Strong. Okay, there's there's like a weird, I won't say oxidative, but there's some kind of nuttiness to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like really tart, you know, somewhere between like pomegranate and like a cranberry. But most of it is is that weird like woody nuttiness. Hmm. 
All right. So our description says uh, notes of wild strawberry and freshly smashed mulberry with little hints of almond tart and blood orange. Fresh yet structured on the palate, like biting into a juicy handful of berries, a slightly saline finish keeps the wine light on its feet and super easy to drink. Oh, it is good with the tomato. Hmm. So I guess I was I wasn't catching that on the nose, but for me, I'm I was that almond tart that it was talking about is is what I'm just getting more on the on the palate. Yeah, I thought I was getting walnut. So almond is an interesting. Yeah. Bit of an odd one. Mm. Much better with with. Well, I think I just had it with some uh, caged a cave, cave aged cheese. Cheddar. Hmm. And it goes pretty well with that. But again, th those those kind of fruit notes, you know, for, for a rosé, this is not displaying a lot of, well, it's, it's kind of old world in terms of even its rosés don't really display those those, you know, fresh fruit notes as kind of like the main parts to it. And but also the more that it warms up in my glass, the more uh, just like the more aromas that seem to come off of it. That's what I was thinking as well. Nope, still smells like spinach. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I, I'm, you know, like I said, yeah, you, you can't really go wrong with you know pegging any rosé as as having say like strawberry note, but this, I'm not really getting a strawberry. Hmm. Oh, I just had like a weird flashback with that last, last sniff. It smelled like like. A room that that a smoker had lived in for like twenty years. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. This is tobacco. <laughs> yeah, like like just old stale tobacco. Ugh. I lived in a house like that. I'm sorry. Like drink houses into that. You smoke? Uh, it took me back to childhood. <laughs> no, the first house that we rented well the house that we rented in maryland when we moved in we had to like i had to take the doors off of the cabinets and take them and clean them in the basement and the utility sink and we had to wipe down the walls to get the paint to stick <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because of the tar oh when you clean the windows, it was paper towels that was coming off like orange brown. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> Good, days. Good choice. <laughs> well, they let us pull up the carpet, the avocado green sculptured carpet, <laughs> and expose the hardwood floors underneath. Oh, nice. They let us paint and do whatever we wanted to at the house. So it was great. It was cute. Cute little bungalow. All right, we are moving on to wine number five. And five, again, is going to be our night 19, the Pierre Nebbiolo Riva. 
Now, I was a, a little excited because, well, Nebbiolo, uh, as you know, especially from Piedmont, um, is where they make Barolo. Now, Barolo is delicious. Uh, this, uh, I was looking at the a little bit of the notes on this, and these were uh, fermented and aged in uh, stainless steel instead of either uh, some type of French oak or a, uh, a neutral boutique. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that is also the reason why this is a Nebbiolo and not a Barolo. It's really very red. So yeah, I'd say this has just got like a red, but it's also for for a 2019 for it to have such a kind of like wide rim to it is uh yeah. I want to say concerning, but um <laughs> this is this is this is it's looking older than it than it should be. It's is got, that good or bad? Well, it, it to me it says that they might have had a little uh much like a little too much oxygen as they were um you know aging it. Uh-huh. And that that will kind of prematurely well, it'll prematurely age it more than you know uh if you had topped up the tanks all the way. Got <laughs> Just it. that that introduction of, of oxygen in there is what's giving it that kind of a little bit of like a, a pinkish slash orangish rim. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get this thing a swirl and a sniff. Oh, wow. Really? Like cranberry yeah. smell? Like it's that hard fruity? It's... Yeah, it's somewhere between like cranberry and like a really fresh like tart cherry. Like an expensive leather. <laughs> you know? Leather? No, no the pieces no. that they patch together and say, here you have a leather cherry. To... They, they, they've tried to make better by adding chemicals to it. It. Not that rich. Like, this is really good stuff. So it smell it smells it smell it smells like like the fruit has been somewhere between baked like yeah it's it smells like you know like like pie filling. <laughs> okay. Like what? We're, we're, filling. Pie filling like it's like it's like cooked fruit. Like pie filling out of a can, so you have that metal behind it. So the jammy, what you call it? No, mm -hmm. nothing. Oh, because jam is in glass. This is something that's been in metal. Yeah, I mean, what the, the difference between like cooked and jammy is that you know you still have like that sort of element of freshness to it. But hmm, yeah, well, uh... this is kind of weird to have an old world that is very very fruity. I'm not really picking up a lot of, you know, kind of no, earthy. Really I mean, there there is like a, a touch of tobacco back there, but eh, I wouldn't even say tobacco. It's more tea-ish. I'm getting chocolate vanilla and leather. You're getting chocolate? I think so. Hmm. Well, let's let's give it a taste and see. Cheers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me give me your thoughts before I, I share mine. Cherry Coke. Fuckering. Um astringent. I've had worse. <laughs> like <laughs> it, there there's there's three things. Well, the, the main note for me that's coming right off the forefront is white pepper whole lot of white pepper and then all of a sudden it gets into somewhere between cherry and almost like a like a tomato vine it was 
فاهم I mean, I, I, anything that's, that's heavy on the, the spice, I'm, I am a, a big fan of. <laughs> and again, for me, that's, that's what this has is um, much more on that, that white pepper. I'm not really getting any other spices other than white pepper. It just tastes, I don't know, sort of Chinese. Mm. So tasty notes. Nebbiolo aged in stainless steel for crispness and purity of fruit. Lively on the palate with raspberry and tart currant, accented by a faint but persistent cinnamon note. How come faint and persistent sounds like an oxymoron to me? Well, no, because I mean, if it's just if it's it's just like you know, like a, a light buzzing sound. <laughs> okay. Does it finish? Like, is it, is it like a tomato finish? It's like a weird taste at the end. What is that? So, so I just tried it with the turnover. That's thing. the stainless steel. Cast. Is it good with the turnover thing? And I think that brought out that tomato like thing. So, are are you getting any chocolate on this, Rob? on the palate no not in taste yeah well and that, that's what i was kind of thinking you know it, you might have been it might have been like some of the tannins that you were like smelling mm -hmm. but usually um and that was you know a little bit of a, a cheat by by seeing that it was aged in in stainless steel is that you know chocolate pretty much the chocolate and vanilla will always come from the barrels oh right you're right yes Delightful with the salad too. Yeah, and the more that I smell it, um, the more that that those like tomato notes are really coming to the forefront. But can't really say raspberry and currant. But this is, I, I would say, this is like just from the smell and and the flavor. This would be a perfect pasta dish. Like red sauce pasta dish. Yep, I agree. Okay. You do well, but no pasta. I'm not a wine man. Okay, but there's plenty of red sauce. Oh, I have something. Hmm. Yeah, so I finished it up with uh, I had some fontina with a uh, a dried tomato rub, and that was pretty excellent with it. <laughs> All right, our last wine of the night, our night twenty one, Falats Priorat, which is a Spanish uh, Catalonian uh, blend of fifty percent Grenache, thirty five percent Carignan. 10% Syrah and 5% Cabernet Sauvignon. So, as we look at this one, so this one is much more, um, you know, kind of uniform in its color. From both the uh, middle to the sides. We're actually falling behind. Yeah, we're behind. Yeah. Oh, you guys haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thought I saw. Empty glasses. I was like, okay, yeah. well, let's continue. Damn. Man, it's only taken what, three weeks? 
So, <laughs> so yeah, do your do the tilt on this one, and you can see that the color on this is you know from the middle to the edge, much more you know the color kind of stays the same uh, compared to our our last wine. That's why I was like saying that, especially for a twenty nineteen, that was that had such a a variation that was a little puzzling for a three-year-old wine. All right, so let's give this one a swirl and a sniff. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, what are people getting on the nose for this one? There's there's leather on this one. This one's getting more more towards. But expensive leather. <laughs> it's supposed to cheap leather. Corinthian yeah. I can see, I can see a leather. Yeah, yeah like the, the first thing for me that came to mind was ketchup. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> no, well well, just in terms of like kind of like like a bunch of like really red, but then there's like some kind of like I want to I want to say vinegary, you know, like pungency on the end to it. Yeah, I wouldn't quite wouldn't quite say leather. Again, it, it it's more of that like it's like a, a really dark tea. Well, this smells like tobacco. You think it smells like tobacco? Okay. Yeah, like tobacco hanging in a barn. Tobacco. <laughs> ah. For sure. It would be similar to tea in that it would be a dry leaf. Yes. There's something right at the front of that, that, oh, wow. like before I get the, you know, what? I have to do like really small sniffs in order to catch it. And, it, and maybe it's that, that, mm -hmm. that leather that you were talking about, but it's, it's weird because it's, it's, I want to say barnyardy, but it has that kind of like a, like a country funk to it. All right, well, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Not barnyard funk. I mean, both of those things. I, I think of old saddle. That's mm -hmm. what I think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the winner tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> it's nice. It's. I mean, I'm I'm definitely getting kind of like a like a, like some kind of weird red and black fruit blend, but it's. It's towards the, it's towards the back. I mean, I'm still getting a lot of that kind of dirty earth flavors up front. Muddy Creek. There's a, there's a hint of spice in there. Yes. Can I actually describe which it is? Uh, it's it's like somewhat black pepper, somewhat nutmeg, but I wouldn't quite say you know much much pepper or like cinnamon. It's 
So according to the tasty notes, uh, the silky tannins of the wine are wrapped around a core of bright red currant, currant fruit and cherry cordial flavors. Pomegranate spice toffee. I've never even heard of spice toffee. And even a touch of mandarin orange frame the finish. 12 months in a combination of French and American oak lends subtle spices and tames the tannins. I liked it with the salad. I don't know what you The beef Wellington is really good too. It was good with both the beef and the chicken. Mm. Usually, it's not around good wine. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a decent wine. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting that they they aged in in both american and and french oak they didn't really say if, well m most of them will never say whether it's new or or used barrels <laughs> but the fact that the you know they're those kind of barrel notes aren't that expressive in here I'd say that they would, they're probably either used barrels or they weren't aged in either for very long. I agree. Yeah, not one of the Definitely not. Like, Ooh, what's like what's cedar it? or chocolate or vanilla. It's really not. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of chocolate. There's not a lot of vanilla. There's not a lot of even hazelnut. I've got a hazelnut chocolate bar here. So there's. Not one of these wines did we want licorice with. I actually had it a bit with this and Okay. okay no. But not one have we done. Oh, that's the licorice. Where's right. the licorice? Right. It's a little bit really light. So it needs mm -hmm. to be kind of like dark. Well, I mean, none of these had like that that big like anise uh -huh. note to it that, that really would have, you know, made the licorice pop. <sighs> but yeah, I'd, I'd I'd agree that this is probably the, the the highlight of the night. I was I was really hoping the Nebbiolo was going to be delicious, but well, it yeah, it, it wasn't bad. But it, it I mean, uh, again, maybe it's because it's just Nebbiolo and not Barolo that uh, yeah, I had my my hopes a little too high. <laughs> I uh, pulled a got the vecchia out of the got the vecchi out of the mm. basement. Oh, I did. Christmas for Christmas. Well, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, st stop it. So uh, say, see the YouTube. <laughs>